way you just spoke to me was straight up white supremacy. You actually just answered with racism. So I wanna show a little bit of how all of this wokeness that leads to this bizarre guilt and an incapacitated group of people who seemingly can't step up against a bunch of 15-year-olds who don't know what they're protesting about, uh, how it's been pushed on us virtually at every level. There is a girl by the name of Sarah Rayo. Uh, she is, she's, I suppose, big on Twitter as one of these anti-racist people, although everything that she writes out uh, is seemingly racist. She's a, she considers herself an American radical political activist, so of course she got a TV show. Uh, the TV show is called Race to Dinner, and yes, it's as bad as you think. Take a look. You, actually, Margaret, you didn't say yours. What? Your racist thing. Thing that you've done. Thought about or I done. Know. You have yeah. something inside of you that's not quite, like, that's racist. So you must have, you must have examples in your own life. Well, I also work in environmental engineering. I have absolutely no people of color or minimal people of color, possibly the exclusion being slightly Hispanic. No. I mean, Saira doesn't like her attitude. I can say a racist thing you've done because it just happened. When you just talked to me the way you just did, this is how white women talk to us all the time. These are microaggressions. Mm -hmm. When I say the exact same thing to my white girlfriend who says the same exact thing. I don't care if you talk to everybody like that. Okay. Right? The way you just spoke to me was straight up white supremacy. You actually just answered with racism. White supremacy so is said to be hidden in innocuous phrases and banal behavior. The smallest things could be considered racist. It's enough that a person from a minority group feels insulted. Absolutely. Sounding terribly white. I don't know that I was all that racist to start with, but I also would be more aware or hyper aware of my thoughts or reactions to circumstances that would be racist. I have so many jokes and so many comments that I wrote down. I honestly don't know where to start other than the British guy who is doing the voiceover in honor of racism shot himself in the head because he was an old white man at the end of recording that thing. Melissa, these people are so extraordinarily pathetic, extraordinarily pathetic, but again, they're just they're just reacting to a society that has gone completely wrong. Yes, oh, by the way, they, they pay her $500 for that. She doesn't pay them to sit there. They pay her $500 for the privilege of having a meal where someone tells you that you're a white supremacist. Melissa? Yeah. Okay, do, do you notice how smug that woman was? The one who's accusing the poor white woman of, of being racist. She was so smug. She was being a bully. And this whole scene to me looks like these are... Are, are people that have terrible personalities that find camouflage in the ide ideology. Like she's just using this ideology to kind of bully this woman and to talk to her in a way that's just, you know, feeding her own narcissism, it seems like to me. I mean, James probably knows more about this kind of phenomenon, but but that's just what it, what it, what it seems like it, it is to me, that, that it just gives you a license to treat others, which with cruelty, with such viciousness. Am I, and, am and, I right? And it's, it's just evil. Like, it's just, it's, James, please. It's just patently evil. What you guys watched just now was a Maoist struggle session. But the irony is that Mao had to throw people in prison to get them put into conditions of struggle, <laughs> whereas literally you can get awful white women signing up to pay $500 a piece to participate in their own struggle session. But the point of the struggle session was that you had this, this, uh, social group around you that was going to help you uh, want to confess to these crimes, but you also had a interrogator who would accuse you of crimes that in, in the, the phrasing from, from the Chinese that you were not able to recognize. And so the goal was to help you learn to recognize your crimes, in this case, your crimes of racism, which were invisible to you. And the goal is to bully you and to hound you and to create a social environment where it feels like there's a pressure for you to want to confess. And then the second you start to confess, the next stage is to say that your confession is not sincere enough. And you continue to twist the thumb screws, the emotional and social thumb screws, until you get Get people like at the end we saw the lady saying that she you know she could be more aware i could learn more about my my invisible <laughs> crimes